I messed up. Last episode, I said that we updated to 1.19, and we did. My F3 menu says that we're on 1.19, uh, but I didn't do anything with that information last episode, so today, we're gonna go exploring. Our nearest mangrove is about 2,000 blocks away, so uh, I'm gonna take some obsidian, obsidian with me into the nether and build a new portal a couple hundred blocks away, and hopefully we'll get somewhere close to a mangrove that we can explore. Oh, look at that! Right on top of it. Okay, perfect. Uh, so now, we just need to chop down a couple of trees and get the saplings, the new saplings. Uh, and uh, there's also mud blocks. So, oh, there's a lot over here. Um, and those are going to be important because I'm going to use those as the floor for the crypt. So, let's, uh, let's gather up some resources. Oh, the water here is amazing. It's such a nice color, like teal blue. I love that. If you haven't noticed, this is my first time kind of wandering into the 1.19 stuff. I have seen videos about it, but I haven't actually experienced it for myself, and it's pretty cool. I, I like it quite a lot. These frogs make the best sounds. Oh, look at their little chest puff up. And their waddle. Oh, it's oh wow, he just like zooms up there. <laughs> oh, it's so cool. Okay, I didn't pack a bed, so it's gonna get nighttime here soon. Um, so we're just gonna tear through these trees a little bit real fast, and uh, hopefully we can get a decent amount before we have to leave. Oh, there's a village right over here. All right, let's go sleep in one of their beds. My bed. <laughs> go sleep in the other one. All right, what do we got in here? Ah, ooh, some emeralds. A couple apples, I'll take them. Sure, sure, sure. All right, back to the mangrove. Let's see what this place looks like up from, from way up high. <gasps> wow. Yeah, this is cool. This place is huge. Yeah, look at this water compared to this water. This, this is too blue. I love this greenish teal color. Yep, big fan. I like the mangrove. Okay, I have got uh, several stacks of mud and a little bit of the mangrove logs, plus a couple of propagules. So uh, I can always come back here later and get more if I need to, but I think for now, we've got enough. We can head back. And uh, yeah, where's my portal at? It's somewhere. There it is. Now the cool thing about the propagules is I think it's the only sapling type that can be planted underwater. So if we just, oh, does it need to be on dirt? Okay, we're, we're doing some experimenting here. I haven't done anything with 1.19 yet, so um, I think it can go underwater. Let's see if it goes on dirt. Okay, it does, awesome. And uh, I do know that it needs quite a lot of space to grow, so I think, um, like, it grows along the the cross bit, so, like, this direction. So if we give that enough space, then hopefully that will grow. But I also don't think it needs to be on water. Uh, I think we can just plant it right on grass, so we'll try that also. So I'm just gonna stick one right about here. Yeah, that, that plants. And then, um, let's grab some bone meal and try and grow it up a little bit and see kind of what one individual tree looks like, because I'm, I'm really curious to see how that's gonna go. Is there a bad guy in my backyard? Let me grab more than one bone meal. Ah, he's in my house! What? <laughs> Get out of here! Why did you follow me in here? Oh my goodness, if I had a heart rate monitor, <laughs> it would have shot up to like 120. My goodness. All right, let's grow this up. Let's see, oh yeah, here we go. Ooh, the leaves don't look quite as good here in the... What, what biome are we in? Uh, taiga. They don't look quite as good in the taiga, but that looks all right. Let's, um, let's grab our shears, and we'll take a couple of the leaves down, too, and we'll be able to keep those. Okay, I can say with confidence that this is my least favorite tree to harvest. It's a pain in the butt to try and get all these mangrove logs, because they, they grow like the... Um, 
the really big oak trees like that where the branch is going all over the place and they're buried in leaves and they sprawl all up and down and all over the place and it's not fun. Plus, the logs aren't even on the ground, so you have to climb up the roots or, or get right underneath it and then climb up. It's it's not fun. Not I don't like it. But it's a shame, though, because the logs here... I mean, let's, let's lay this out. These look, I think, really cool, in my opinion. I love the red color. Let's uh, throw some of these down. Yeah. Ah, it looks so cool. I don't have a use for them. Um, in, in the kind of color scheme that we've got going on here in our base, but I'm sure I'll find a use for them somewhere at some time. And, uh, yeah, I just hope I, <laughs> I just hope I, I come up with a better way of harvesting these in the future because it's, it's difficult. Anyway, now that we have a whole lot of mud blocks, we can finally, uh, get some of this flooring filled in. I, I started working on the ceiling a little bit. I've got some patches of moss with the glow berries growing down um, kind of just all up in the ceiling and uh, I have plans to add more over this way and uh, of course as we move on this way and when this area gets more completed then uh, we'll, we'll do we'll do all the details here too but right now I've got a lot of mud in my inventory so I'm just gonna get started laying this down Well, here it is. This is our cave. It's looking... I, I love this. This The ambiance that it provides here uh, is just... The, nothing matches this. I, I'm very, very happy with this and the way that everything here turned out. I went with a really dark theme for this. Again, I mean, it's a crypt. What, what, more, what more can you expect? But um, yeah, I, I replaced all of the torches and I went with candles and I went through here and I made sure that every place, uh, every every flat platform on here is spawn proof while still being as dark as I can make it. Uh, fortunately, I have a mod installed that allows me to see uh, all the light levels for the blocks around me. And so if any of these blocks appear red, then I know that uh, something can spawn on it. And uh, that's not good. So uh, I went through here and I made sure that nothing will spawn. That is a stair, uh, but it's on top of another stair. So nothing's going to spawn there. Uh, it's just a weird rendering issue with uh, with this mod. But yeah, um, nothing's spawning in here. If we come on inside here, everything is a four or a five or a six or lower. So um, yeah, I, <laughs> the 1.18 update was amazing for this fact. You, you could not create scenes like this without mob spawning because they need, uh, they would spawn below light level seven. And so now they need the light level zero, which is great. As I was decorating the crypt and getting it looking all nice, this wandering trader appeared outside. So I ran down to my trading hall to get some emeralds and ran my way back up to get some cyan dye. Uh, cyan's probably the hardest one to get because you need cactus for green and lapis for blue and then you mix those together to get cyan. Uh, and then I thought, well, I have the emeralds, so I might as well get everything. Thanks. Also, a slime spawned down in my mind, so now I know where to make a slime farm. I'm not always the best at explaining my thought process for some of the builds that I make, so I'm gonna give it another shot. I wanted to explain sort of the uh, thought process behind the palette that I used specifically for the entrance of the cave here, um, because as you can see in the crypt part of the crypt, uh, we have a pretty uh, sterile pattern, I, I would say. So it's just the cobble deep slate 
and the uh, stone deep slate. What's this called? Deep slate bricks. And um, I wanted to rough it up a little bit in the entryway here, and there's a there's a reason for that. Uh, if we take a look at the topmost part, the ceilings here, um, all throughout the crypt, it's messy. And the reason for that is because, um, you know, as if, uh, okay, so imagine yourself as uh, some sort of a worker here, if you will. Um, you're very rarely going to get up into the very top of the ceiling to clean things down, to remove weeds and brush and roots and stuff like that. So I want it overgrown a little bit because it's not going to get much attention. Whereas the stairway here, I mean, this is going to be swept daily. It's got mopping all over. <laughs> it's clean. And I want to carry that sort of same theme this way. The floor is going to be nice and crisp, but everything else that you're, you're not really going to be reaching all that often is going to be overgrown. And so I uh, kind of broke away from that pattern a little bit here at the entrance because uh, up here, everything is so tight together um, that as the growth around here starts to grow more, it's leaking onto the floor. It's kind of corrupting the pathway that's here. It's dirty. There's, I mean, I've got mud. In, by the way, <laughs> sidetrack. Um, the mud and the cobbled deep slate, I love it. It's so good. It's a great, like, kind of hybrid between the two. Um, I'm sure you could throw in another block in here to even, to kind of add it, um, uh, I'm sure you could throw another block in here to kind of mix it all together even better, but uh, I'm trying to keep my options limited. So, mud, deep slate, really good. Uh, that's that's it. And then um, we've got the kind of grass on the outside that's coming. It's making its way in. Um, so we've got a lot of grass here, kind of a little bit more coming in, and then it's tapering off until there's only one little block here and one little block here. And, um, and it, so it kind of blends between, um, like the moss is reaching out here and the grass is reaching into here. So it just gives it that overgrown feeling. And then also with this height elevation here, um, the, the path isn't coming up here. If you notice like, uh, like sidewalks after a while, they just kind of get overgrown with grass. And so that's kind of the same thing that's happening here as, um, as more and more traffic flow into this place here. Uh, more grass and moss and and pebbles or whatever, it's going to continue to eat up this path here. And so um, maybe if you were to peel back a couple blocks of um, a couple of these blocks here, you'd see more of the path, but it's just getting overgrown and overrun. And uh, yeah, so that's <laughs> to make a long story short, it's messy up here and it's messy all the ways like up in the ceiling and it's nice and clean down in here. We have some more digging to do, and I need to move my beacon because it doesn't quite reach over there. I just got it back, and then if I just cross this threshold here, I start to lose it. So let's move the beacon, and we'll, we'll do some more digging. Well, the layout of it is done anyway. Do you want to take a look? Ta-da! <laughs> so after a few more hours of digging and decorating, we have four halls done. And uh, this is what they look like. Pay no attention to the floating one. I'll, I'll show that in a minute. But yeah, each hall is going to be for a different type of villager. So this one will be for the librarians. And we've got 20 spots for them to go in in here. And then uh, because librarians are the ones that I, are the villagers I most often use, I made two of them, two halls for them. So I'll have a hall there and a hall here for them. And then uh, moving forward, I've got 
um, a hall for farmers, and then another hall for someone else. And I, I don't know what type I'm going to put in here just yet. I might actually do half of them as uh, like um, weapon smiths and the other half as armorers or something along those lines. Because I don't think I'm going to need 20 of each of them. So, so half is fine. Now, the reason why this one is so highly elevated, uh, it's because this is the one that is a tunnel. And this tunnel has a bit of a room here. And then this room has another tunnel, which goes, well, not into the void. <laughs> but it goes all the way down this way. And then a little bit to the right. And then we're here. Hi, bud. We are in our trading hall. Our, our old one. And so this is going to be the route that I take to move not only the zombie, but all of my villagers that are in here. Uh, all the way over that way. So now all we need to do is just put down a couple of rails so that we can move all of our friends over to the new trading hall. All right, we've got our zombie situated here in the corner so that he won't hurt any of our incoming villagers. And I have all of the places here in our hall named with all the different enchantments so I know where each of my villagers are going to go. I decided to split it roughly in half. The librarians with enchantments A through K will be in this hall and L through Z in this hall. And this hall actually has 20 enchantments, which fills up the... 20 spots that I have perfectly, which is really, really cool. And then over here, because there aren't 20 enchantments between A and K, uh, there's only 17, so we've got like three empty spots, but that's that's fine. And after a long session of moving villagers around, I now have all of my librarians moved in from the old villager hall to the new one. There are still a couple, <laughs> more than a couple actually, of cells here still open, and that's because I don't have the villagers with those enchantments on them yet, or with uh, with those books. So I still have uh, several villagers to find and, and add in here with the enchantments. I, I don't really expect to need any of these anytime soon. Uh, maybe Riptide once we do get a trident. Actually, I think we have a trident. But that's a project that we can work on another day. I am just... Thankful and glad that we have all of our librarians moved over. I also started moving over some of our farmers, and I got a couple of new ones. We only had two before. Now we're up to five. And these are the guys that give me my golden carrots. So I just plop in a couple of emeralds here, and then I get carrots from them. And uh, I, I want more so that I can just come in here, do a trade, and then I've got like three stacks of carrots right off the bat. And I don't have to come here as often. I haven't moved all of my villagers just yet. I still have my iron trading guys in here still. And uh, this this random villager <laughs> who has claimed this composter for himself. And then I also have a couple of extras down here. So these, um, these are cart cartographers. And I really only use them to trade glass panes with to make emeralds. But I didn't find it to be a very effective method of getting emeralds. So I kind of stopped using them. Anyway, enough about the villager trading hall. We have spent quite a bit of time on that the past couple of episodes, so let's uh, let's focus on something else. Uh, right now, I'm just kind of taking care of our copper situation here because I still have a whole lot of it to set out and let it oxidize so that I can use it in other projects. And speaking of other projects, I want to tackle one last thing on our adventure board over here, and it's one I've been meaning to get to for a while now, and I just haven't started doing anything with it yet, but I think we're ready. Although we're not technically entirely finished with moving the trading hall, I will consider it done as it pertains to the adventure board, simply because the only thing really left to do is move the final few villagers from over here to over here, and uh, that's not going to be that difficult. The bamboo farm is also sort of not finished, but I'm marking it off anyway because it does work. It, I mean, this one over here, it's working slowly, mind you. I mean, this is after spending so much time digging around in there, and it's there's uh, yeah, there's, we just got a couple there right now. <laughs> so I do 
have a plan to expand that farm, probably just a, a small something underground that will help kind of improve the rates at which we get bamboo. Um, but what we have left to do on here is the sugarcane farm. And previously I had mentioned that I wanted to put that uh, over at the creeper farm. So I think I'm going to get started on that right now. Actually, I lied. I checked the time on this video and we are quickly running out. So the sugarcane farm will have to wait until next episode. However, I did want to at least showcase what I was planning on doing. And uh, first, let's check on our loot here. We've got quite a bit of gunpowder. We can probably bring most of this back. Um, but the plan for the sugarcane farm is this. Let me not die by getting into the... Ah, I can't, can't, can't get in there. Anyway, I'll just come down here. Three little foxes swimming in the ocean. The plan is such. Uh, I'm going to create a circle or a rectangle or a box of something uh, just on top of the water here, right underneath the creeper farm, because uh, this is where the sugarcane is going to go. So there's going to be a flying machine on one side that's going to sweep back and forth every couple of uh, minutes or whatever. That will give the sugarcane time to grow, and then the flying machine will come and take it all away and put it into little chests for me. Uh, and then I will have gunpowder up top and sugarcane down below. And then maybe I'll put like some sort of a, a water a bubble elevator uh, all the way up to the chests up here. That way I only have one simple place to stop and shop for my gunpowder and my sugarcane. Yeah, uh, <sighs> made it. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you again, everyone, for sticking around and being a part of the experience. We are having, well, I am having quite a blast uh, just doing all sorts of stuff here um, in my Minecraft world. And, uh, you know, it's fun to have uh, a couple of people to share it with. And this, uh, whew, I am very, very happy with how this is turning out. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.